The Source. She does. Uh, let's see. Eight minutes. Gosh, getting a little bit late start here. Caroline Baldwin is in the studio, and this is called In the Garden with Caroline. So we're going to talk about gardening. Well, at least Caroline will be. And you can also, if you want to call in and speak to Caroline, the number is 622 Remember, Caroline set up a Facebook page as a counterpart to the radio show. Yep. So you can use that as a way to show photographs of the things you want to ask about or just to show off your accomplishments in the garden, et cetera, or maybe some bugs that you find interesting and uh, I know you have a, yeah, a few got, people got, who do this. So. Yeah, and I've got an envelope with some too. We'll, you we'll have something to, cool yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. We, got something, we got something to play so with How today. are you, first I'm, of all? I'm good. I'm real good. It's good. We, we, Yeah, we got a late start. We were talking about coffee. <laughs> even though I, I like know. Coffee. I was distracted. Yeah. I'm sorry. Maybe that's all right. All right, so yes, we have a visual today. Make sure I got yeah, this we on. Oh, oh, there so we go. On. So, yeah, we, so we got visual. We you got visual. brought in something for you to look at and I've never seen this before. What is that? They're bagworms. Uh, we got a baggie full of bagworms. I can actually, see. they're not going to get away. No, no worry. No worry about them escaping out of, out of there. That's a worm, huh? That's a worm. Wow. We got it. But what's it like in a cocoon? It's in a, it's in, this is how bagworms do it. It'll become a moth. Um, and he had, he, he plucked off five of them here. And so he's got quite a few on, on that tree. So um, is it called the bagworm because they're in a bag? They're because they're in, because they're in this, this, uh, <laughs> This bag, this so, this pouch, this cocoon kind of thing, and and they are they can be quite detrimental to trees. Um, you can't spray generally anything on top of them because it's not going to penetrate that. So what is it doing right now? Becoming it's, it's something just, else? It's it will become a moth. Oh, a moth. Okay, it yeah, will become a moth. That, yeah. yeah, and and hence that moth will then the adult moth will breed, uh, in turn lay more eggs again, creating another you know another generation and. Yeah, when you see the abundance of these on there, they're um, the best way actually looking it up um, is to to go through and pluck them off and just destroy them because they because cause problems. it's well they cause problems they are detrimental you know, they can be damaging to the tree they do attack multiple tra- you know different kinds of trees um, let me see they say you know besides evergreens which I forget if he's you know he may be tuning in. Uh, that there's quite a few. Where did my list of trees go that they attack? But they both um, do evergreen as well as deciduous trees, which deciduous means they lose their leaves. Uh, eggs hatch in late spring, early summer. When super tiny black larvae emerge at two millimeters, they're uh, barely larger than a pinhead, which makes them light as a feather so they can blow. The caterpillars use their silk thread as a parachute to travel to nearby tree and begin building a new home wow. or bag there. The pests hang out in their bags until late summer, or early fall, when the adult male emerge to mate. And then about the size of a quarter male, bagworms are uh, ashy black moths with transparent wings. They are native to North America, mainly in the eastern United States, dispersed all along the East Coast as uh, and in much of the southeast, so they are quite. You know, they're they're around. Okay, uh, arborvitae, evergreens, other trees. Um, easiest way to remove them is to cut off the bags by hand and destroy them. But you also have to get that silk too, because I guess the silk can be uh, wrapped around the end of the branch or that piece of that branch and actually uh, kind of strangle that piece off 
where they've attached themselves. Oh, wow. So, Amazing, isn't you know, it? kind of doing. So how how have I never seen this before? Are they not that? that... Um, they're on, speci- you know, pretty much specific trees. That's why I was trying to, where did my list go? Um, 12 different kinds of trees, though they prefer evergreens like junipers, arborvitae, cedars, and spruce. Um, they will feed on, they will feed on other trees. Huh. The, you know, so did he tell you which kind of tree he found his? That's on? what I was going to say. If, if you know, I, I'm sure he's listening. So we'll, we'll listening. find out. We need, yeah. we need an answer. That that's your best way. And I'm trying to find out, and I'm not finding it at the moment what I'm looking for. We'll find it. <laughs> we'll find it during this time. As I'm trying to find out if this one pesticide actually would, if used, um, you know, early in the season. I yeah. just got to be able to read the label. Ah, huh, here we go. Here comes my label up on my screen. You got something? Yeah. Well, we may it may take us a few minutes to find. We do have a phone call. Okay, let's take, take the, phone the phone call. call. Sure. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes, it's you. Thank you for uh, taking time to look at my raccoon problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a that's a bag that's your bagworm problem. <laughs> you know they're they're clinging on to a, a a brick wall in front of my house and to, and lanterns that light up at night. Oh wow! Not, not, not the bush or tree itself, but on, on these other different areas. Okay, so well, that could be that wow. they're getting, you know, that they're um, gonna. I hate to say winter over that, you know, that they're getting ready to do a changeover on it. At least those are on the building. But take a look at the shrubbery and such around there. If you've got junipers or cedars, ever other evergreens, um, even ground cover junipers, they can get on those. Um, yes, that, that's what I have is uh, the ground juniper uh, mm-hmm. uh, evergreen uh, uh, below the wall area. And uh, I have seen a couple, but most of them, they always like to cling on to the, to the brick wall or okay. the lanterns that light up at night. Okay. Well, that's, and they're all in that same area. More or less. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, yeah. I'm talking dozens. Right. Well, the best thing to do would be to go ahead and, and pull them off the wall, pull them off the lantern, uh, do the, do the stomp. Uh, whatever you want to do, just mash them up, throw them into a bag, tie it off, and throw it in the garbage. Um, you know, however you want to. But I would, I would go ahead and destroy them. They're not helping your your plants out because all that material that's around them is from those junipers. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it was pretty interesting. I, I hadn't had that problem until last year. I've seen, I noticed a couple of them. Okay. And then uh, I threw them away. And then uh, now this year, they seem to be uh, quite a few more. So they must, they must like whatever they like around here. I don't know. That, and you, you may have missed some. And it could be, like you say, you didn't, or you may not have ever noticed them before. Maybe this year, they're finally, they've got a population up that is now visible. Sometimes we'll yeah. have a problem that'll start out tiny. We won't even notice it, you, you know, even, you know, based on the size of uh, what the adults are, you're, you know, they're, they're very little. Uh, and even the juvenile, the, you know, the immature, when it hatches, um, as it begins its life cycle, they're, they're so small. And if they're on the inside of a tree limb, you know, you know up under inside the canopy of that tree, you may not see them. So what, you, what is does it come out of the cocoon like a like a caterpillar, it's, and then eventually do like wings and fly away? No, it's it's it is feeding in in there. It is gathering and that kind of stuff. It'll come out of this as a moth. Oh, and then the moth oh. will breed and then start the process over again. Okay, well, thanks very much for explaining my situation. I'm going to go out there and uh, take a look again. And if sure. I see any, I'm going to pluck them, put them in a little little baggie, and uh, say goodbye to them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, just throw them in something. Just cl- you know, zipper it closed, throw it in the garbage can, and you're set. But if they oh, are, if you do find them on the trees or anything, so I would take a look through the through the bushes and that you you might need to actually clip them off. They may not just break off of there. And as the uh, as the information on the page I, I was looking at said that there can be little silks that are wrapped around that. So you may need to get you know snip that off to where you've got all of that. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Oh, I'm going to go up there right now and see if I can cause them some problems. There you go. Sounds good. Okay. Bye now. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Carolyn. Yeah. Is Can we open one up? Can we look at it? I, I guess we can. Yeah? Yeah, yeah you want to yeah. do it? Oh, All right, do, wait, do we? Well, let's, I, never, I don't have my pocket <laughs> knife that anymore. I don't yeah. know if I can break one up. Open I want to see, see, see if let's there's see a worm. I want to see if we can see the worm. 
Let's see if I can get, <laughs> see if I can get one to, to hold on, hold on. Open. Make sure okay. I can see it. Okay. Well, that's why I'm doing it on the white paper. Oh, okay, okay. There he is. You see him? You see the that's worm? This. This is that's the, the worm? Oh, I my mean, gosh. That's, that's he's huge. Cocoon. Yeah. Well, he's, look, he's not happy. No, he's not happy because I just oh. pulled him out of there. Oh. Um, he'll be going, you know, Here. probably be turning into, when you see the, the fuzzies inside, you know, that's the cocoon. Yeah. To where he was going to be uh, turning into uh, Oh, my mom. God. I expected yeah, a little wasn't, worm. Yeah. Well, they start out tiny. Oh. <laughs> well, like I, I grabbed the threads on it. He's like a, a Mexican jumping bean. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh my! Yeah, he's not. He's not happy that I just pulled him out of there because <laughs> no. this was his protection. You woke him up. I woke him up, and and that one, yeah, that one's gonna die. So, you know, it's gonna die. Yeah, that one will die. But that's okay. We're gonna kill the other ones anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting them go. Oh yeah, no! It's not one of those kind of things. He I'm says, gonna let that bagworm. My yeah. life is ruined. Yeah, what, right? Yeah, that's it. Gosh, that's it. But the, it's actually quite large. Um, it is. Large. There's the yeah. You know, there's the end. Show you. Yeah, yeah. My my finger there with it. I don't have or or here. Here's a bottle cap to see. Yeah, there you I don't go. know if you can see the difference in the size. There you go, yeah. you know, he's actually quite large. Yeah. Um. I was picturing you know, like there, an inch and that's, Yeah, because I say they start out at like two millimeter, uh, which is a little tiny thing. And, that becomes but a that's big moth, be, right? Yeah, that's going to be a pretty decent sized moth, I guess. You know. Wow. So, I don't know. Are we now going to have to hatch one of these things out? <laughs> <laughs> and now we have to see what it looks like when it hatches. <laughs> but, yeah, there's your, there's your bagworm. That's what's inside. And that was pretty pretty easy for you to do. Yeah, I just grabbed it and tore it. Tore it right in the middle, just pulled really, just wow. kind of gave it a pull and a little and he twist. Said they're not even on a tree, they're on a they're hanging, wall. they're hanging on the wall. Um, but they're coming from that, you know, the the junipers underneath, more than likely, and some other, you know, that there so where, are some other ones. Wh okay, what does it make the cocoon out of? That's all plant material, so it just grabs twigs, it's, and it's stuff? Spread, yeah, pieces that they're eating and chewing, and you know. That's fascinating. Yeah, you know, the the, tr the trash kind of you know almost looks like a big trash bug. It looks like yeah. a bunch of it looks like yeah, a, it looks a like bunch a bunch of trash. That, yeah, that, it looks like it looks like actually it looks like a bud, maybe. Uh, you know that it might be you know you know buds can be all different shapes and things like that. Yeah, you know, that yeah. if you if you were to see it on a branch, you, you know you might think of it as just a a, a dead piece. Now, you if know, we left a little it, piece. If we put that worm out on the the sidewalk here, would a bird come down and eat it? You think? Mm, probably not, only because no. it's in that protection. It's no, I mean that the one see. you broke out. Oh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if they know, you know, to eat this because it's something that would be, you know, hidden. You know, birds birds know what they eat. Yeah, based yeah. upon you know years yeah. of knowledge. Oh, you know, as, I have as a as question for you about birds okay. eating things. Okay, there was a story about the University of Florida shooting sandhill cranes. Yeah, because did you hear the story? I, I only heard part of it. I, I didn't because the sandhill cranes were, uh, you know, eating. I guess around the plants that they were planting up there to, to study the plants. And 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 Dennis called and Dennis uh -huh. said, "Well, wait a minute. The 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 birds don't eat the plants. They eat the bugs. That... They eat bugs and lizards and so frogs they would be actually stuff. beneficial to the farm or to the students, whatever they are up there up there. Right. I but then again, I don't know what they were studying. I may have to try to find that ah, article yeah, there because yeah. yeah, I only I only caught you know university and birds on that, and I I don't remember why. Well, I, I imagine I don't know they would eat seeds. No, if no, they, no. I mean, actually, you see the sandhills going through pastures and things like that, and they're picking bugs. up bugs and lizards and grubs and frogs and. Uh, toads and things like that. I'm so Snakes, glad I'm not a bird. You know, you know. I'm so glad I'm human. Yeah, eat normal food. Well, to uh, to them, <laughs> our food is real. Our food is processed. Yeah, so. yeah. They don't want <laughs> it's one of those. One of those. You know, depends on what you are. You know. <laughs> you know, we we, we feed uh, people bread to ducks and make them sick. You know, they'd rather be fed duck food. And wait a minute. The bread I used to feed to the ducks made me. The king Mate. of the ducks. I was the oh. king. The, that, yeah, I, I would show up to. at the pond in, in Beverly Hills, <laughs> and they knew me. This goes back a long time, but I, I used to go there with bread, and I, I felt like the king of the ducks was all, all the ducks. Come running. Yeah. They would all come over to me and say, "Here yeah, he is. <laughs> Here's the guy with the food with the with the junk food." And, and, and <laughs> but it's not good for them. No, yeah, no. no, it's not. They say I think they say better to do uh, popcorn. 
I thought it helped or, build strong yeah. bodies in 12 different ways. Oh, that's people. Yeah, <laughs> because it's yeah, extra, extra <laughs> vitamins and nutrition kind of thing, but not for the, uh, <laughs> not for. Uh, ducks, are, ducks are amazing, though. Ducks are like dogs. Ducks, ducks are, are very smart creatures, like but the craziest thing about them is that a duckling, because we, uh, if a duckling hatches out or say becomes a, an orphan or something like that, it will um, imprint it's on whoever adopts it. Oh, really? Because we had a. So you a, become the mama yeah, duck. We, we had, yeah, actually, and and it's funny because people think, oh, that's just so cute. Look at him follow the child around all over the place. That child is the mama duck, yeah, and that even as they, yeah, yeah, and yeah. even as it, the the bird you know matures, because we had one that had imprinted on it, and it was ended up being a Peking duck, so a white, big white duck, um, with a, uh, a what was she, a Bantam silky cross, so a little bitty. Uh, Huh. Chicken, little bitty hen, uh, black <laughs> hen with feathers all over the place, crazy wild looking, you know, chicken. And oh yeah, the duck followed the chicken all over the place. They were they were <laughs> inseparable. So wow. it's one of those things. Yeah, wow. ducks are ducks that. are a little strange like that. But uh, if you would like to call Carol Ann, the number is 622-9622. This is a full hour show, so you've got plenty of time to get through to Carol Ann and have her answer a question. Uh, thank you, Hugh, for sending in that. that, yep. that yeah, and a little, so, show and, little show and tell it's just, here. It's and, just so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I had a, a – I may have to well, – well, when uh, uh, Robin will post the, the YouTube link uh -huh. to – the Facebook page. Right, right, I mean, right, it's right. on there now. Maybe I ought to take a, a picture too, and I can post it on to yeah. just post it here yeah. this morning for we'll anybody else who's not, you know, maybe not able Put on to your, your, um, on the on the page on the Facebook page. Yes, absolutely. So that we can so we can show and tell what these are. So if you do uh, have something to show and tell, um, you can go to the Facebook page. I will sign on there right now so that I can tell if you're if you're letting us know that you have something on Caroline to look at, or, or can you tell on your computer? Yeah, oh yeah, well, I can uh, tell one. Yeah, I can yeah, okay. I can bring mine up. Okay, yeah. so you don't so just do it and then Carolyn will be able to see it. Right. That's well that is kind of cool. So isn't it late in the year though for a cocoon to be No, no, out? these yeah, no, these guys probably hatched out in spring. I'm not sure the how many life cycles we have here in, in Florida. Many times on insect pests, we we in Florida will have multiple generations versus say a northern state where spring starts much later in the season and is much shorter season where so they only end up with one um you know, one one generation where here we have a tendency to run two or three or you know multiple generations a year on insect pests. So um, you know, just have to keep an eye out for things like that, and um, and um, you know, keep you know, just keep your eye out on on any kind of insect pest. So, but we'll we'll try to get it. And, we'll and you put, you this. posted something. Um, Regarding I posted a, what the link on uh, native plants uh, or the roundup one? The roundup one, yeah. yeah. That it was which which countered another article we had um, that in it, that implied that that um, that roundup was causing cancer, right? And right. you found something that I was this one was one that nothing um, to do with science. Had yeah, it was moreover a um, and and actually re reading what I what I have read, this man did not work in a plant that manufactured roundup. He worked applying it and had a had a line spray on him and this was you know he was his cancer what did not come till later in life and other things that may contribute uh further on based on you know your genetic disposition and um towards you know things and and other things that you're exposed to in life it's one of those kind of things that it just may not have been you know you know, juries, juries are not scientists. Juries take what they're given and go from there, whether or not. It, and a lot of that can yeah, also be right. yeah, based absolutely. on emotions yeah. and things like that, where, you know, you 
I, I'm sorry, you may feel like you're unbiased. I mean, even myself, I feel like I'm unbiased. But then again, we all have biases. It's going to come in one way or another, at least a small part that influences our decision making in anything we do, whether or not it's purchasing produce in a supermarket or or uh, being against a company or or different things like that. So I have a really out of left field question for you. Okay. And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you the back up the backstory first. Okay. We had a guest and he right. wrote a book on sand. On sand. And the book was not only about sand, but it was about stones in general. Okay. And how we are dependent as as people on stones. Uh, okay. not just sand to put into the concrete, but the, the quartz that is used in every single electronic gadget, computer, okay. et cetera. Okay is necessary because you can't run these things without quartz, which is okay. a rock, right? Okay. And he said the best place to get it is in South Carolina. That's the best place. Okay, the best quartz. Of course, that's, yes. Okay. Okay. So the the this if you listen to the pod uh, yeah, the podcast now, the broadcast that we recorded. Right. I didn't didn't pick up on it when he said it. So you have to I, I listened okay. to it and I said, Oh my gosh, I wish I had picked up on that. I would have asked a question about it. Right. It's regarding the stones effect on the vegetables or the plants that they're around. I had never heard that before, that that certain parts of the country have different stones than other parts of the country. And that's probably the mineral. Something in it, it, right? Within the mineral uh, you know, ability. You know, that some soils are so horribly, you know, uh, devoid of certain minerals so, and things like that, that we you have to add. So these here's my specific here. question. Okay. My apple tree. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, the, the tall ones at home. Right. Every, every, from what I understand, it's not native for, or from around here. And would, right. it, would it do better if I got stones? From let's say North Carolina or something. No, not necessarily. And put it no. in in the uh, in no. the dirt with it. No, no. because it's not going to grow in North Carolina. You're going to grow it oh. here in Central Florida. Oh, okay. we don't know what this particular apple is going to be. <laughs> Any of those apples, right. we don't know because just like on the the uh, popular science uh, uh, chart that I you know had brought in and and put a picture of, it's. Um, they all start from the same genetic, from the one, but from there, they are all um, hybrids from that, you know, and it's been going on for years and years and years, generations, uh, you know, hundreds of years. And um, apples don't come true to seed. So more mm -hmm. than, you know, we might be growing what normally would have been a rootstock for anything else that would have been grafted on. But hey, if we're lucky, we'll find out and we'll we'll get an apple. You know, we'll see whether or not we can encourage the trees to grow a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so the stones really on this on on that example. Say, right? On that example, it's not gonna be so there's no too such thing much. as a native stone or well, an invasive it's native stone. To, it's no, no invasive stones unless it's in your yard and you can't get past them to to, <laughs> to plant. But um the, yeah, all there's all your stone and Florida, all our stone is native. All right, we will be right back. We've okay. got a half hour to go. If you want to call in, the number is 622 Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A 95-year-old who worked in a Nazi death camp is deported from the U.S. to Germany after years of negotiations. It was a difficult task because this individual is not uh, of German citizenry. He had his U.S. citizenship taken away, so he technically was without a country. He was stateless. That's Richard Grinnell, U.S. ambassador to Germany, speaking to Fox and Friends. And jurors in the trial of a former Trump campaign manager getting ready for a fourth day of deliberation. Jurors worked later into the evening than usual, but did not reach a verdict. Deliberations will resume this morning. The defense attorneys for Paul Manafort believe the lengthy deliberations are good for their client, and Manafort thinks it was a very good day. Jurors have spent more than 20 hours considering 18 felony charges. Fox's Jared Halpern, Fox News. We report, you decide. These days, there's enough to stress about. Do I eat enough kale? Do I eat too much kale? What's the best way to sell my car? What color should I paint the kitchen? Well, at CarMax, we can't help you with the kitchen or the kale, but we can help you sell your car. 
because at CarMax, we make real offers, not estimates. So you can sell your car quickly and get back to pondering your leafy greens and picking the perfect paint. CarMax, we buy all the cars. You've got lots of engines in your life. Cars, yard equipment, ATVs, motorcycles, watercraft, you name it. And they all use fuel and oil. These same fluids that make your engine run also create deposits that reduce performance and gas mileage. Gum Out Multi-System Tune-Out removes these gummy carbon deposits and stabilizes fuel and oil, helping restore performance and fuel economy. Get a can today at just six forty-seven at your local Walmart. Gum Out. Science in. Performance out. Here is your one-minute news brief. Three people died and two children were seriously injured in a head-on crash north of Tampa Sunday evening on County Road 54 when a 30-year-old man with two children in the car tried to pass other traffic on the two-lane road, hitting a car with two occupants. A Florida judge threw off the November ballot the proposed Amendment 8, which includes a provision to make it easier to set up charter schools in the state. The judge ruled that voters were not told the chief purpose and effect of the proposal. More than one million voters have already cast ballots in the state's primary election. Democrat Nikki Freed, a candidate running to become the state's next agriculture commissioner, says Wells Fargo shut down her campaign account because she supports medical marijuana. And visitors with severe autism can move ahead with their lawsuits claiming Disney's U.S. parks did not do enough to accommodate their need for scheduled routines and no waiting in line for the rides. And that is your news brief from The Source. Howdy folks, R.L. here for Dairy Queen again to tell you about what's hot and what's not. Dairy Queen has some of the best char-grilled chicken breasts on earth, as well as their chicken breast salad. And the burgers are exceptional, cooked on a real grill for the best flavor and less fat. And for dessert, blizzards are unequal. Personally, banana split is my all-time favorite. Dairy Queen Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. Attention WOCA listeners. Do you or someone you know have an outgoing personality with great organizational skills? Well, WOCA is looking for a few good people to join our marketing reps team. You get to meet other great people and business leaders in our community. WOCA Radio offers flexible schedules, great income potential, and some really great fringe benefits too. So if you enjoy talking to people and getting paid to do it, this may be the right choice for you. Apply within or send your resumes to careers at WOCA.com. Hey, Adam, those burgers going to be done before summer's over? <laughs> Maybe. Why? You got big plans for the summer? Not really. Just the usual kids hanging around the house. How about you? Actually, I'm having Joshua get his pilot's license this summer. What? Is he old enough? Can you really do that in just the summer? Yeah. You can get your pilot's license at 17, and the summer is plenty of time. Plus, this could be the start to his career as an airline pilot. That is a great idea. I bet Tyler would love that. Actually, I would too. You guys should do it. I don't have time for that. Some of us have to work for a living, you know? <laughs> Not you. No. Seriously. They work around your schedule. Really? That's cool. Where are you going? Ocala Aviation at the airport off 60th. How'd you hear about it? I heard about it on the radio, then I stopped in. I've got a card if you want the number. Yeah, hold on. Let me get my phone. Hurry up. The burgers are burning. Okay, I'm ready. Go ahead. 861-7484. Hold on. I missed a number. Ah, such a slacker. Here it is again. 861-7484. Excellent. I'm going to call them now. How about we eat before you start your new adventure? That's probably a good idea. You think? All right. 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Let's return to Carol Ann Baldwin. This show is called In the Garden with Carol Ann. We're talking about gardening and had a great first half. And yeah. we got another half coming up. And we opened up a, a cocoon a, a bag, or whatever. A bag worm, bag worm bag. And a big old worm yeah, came big, out of it. Yeah, big old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he, and he's... Not a slimy a, worm, yeah, not a, No, no. It's like in a in a shell. It's, it's, it's like a protection and a protection kind of thing. And so... So we'll, it must... Uh, is this right in assuming that must be relatively new? Because otherwise... Wouldn't there have been the beginnings of some wings? Wouldn't it? No, I mean, no. I mean, this, no, you won't see that usually until they're getting ready to emerge out. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know? There must be a process happening oh, inside there. sure, sure. And we caught it early. It may have, or somewhere in the middle. or It's like opening know. up uh, an egg. Right. When there's a chicken trying to develop. You know? Right, right. Yeah, you have an unfertile egg, which is the one we eat. And then you've got ones that, you know, come mm. off of, uh, you know of a farm that might be, you know, or say, say you've got backyard chickens and you have a rooster. You don't know which ones might be, 
fertile unless you're candling your eggs. And Can I tell you something you know, we did? It's not right. really about farming. Okay. We went on a river cruise on Saturday. Yeah, I saw you did, had some you pictures. Yeah. So I have two facts I want to tell you about. Okay. First of all, the St. John's River flows. It's on the St. John's River. Right. And it flows very, very, very slowly. Right. And the reason it flows very slowly is because... The higher elevation is actually down south, like near Melbourne. Right. And the lower elevation is up near Jacksonville, so right. it flows south to north. to north, right. And it only drops one foot in elevation every 11 miles. There you go. That's yeah. why it's so slow. Right. Just a right. slow Just little a, yeah. river. Okay. The other thing was, you know the expression, uh, Lord Willen and the Creek, creek don't, don't rise. rise. Yeah. Have you ever heard the that? Good, the good Lord Willen and the Creek don't rise. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Did you know that the creek part of that yeah. – is not about the water rising in the river, but about the Creek Indians rising and, ah, and, and, and becoming uh, a, a problem. A problem for, for river for, travel. For, for anybody who's trying to get from one place to the other. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll be there, Lord willing. Willin and the, cri and and the, the creek, creek don't, don't rise, the, rise up. Right, rise right. <laughs> Interesting. That's cool. And I just looked it up to see if the guy was really knowing. Was telling the truth or not. It yeah. says it's the same thing on the internet. It says, oh, there uh, you go. Benjamin Hawkins of the 18th century was asked by the U.S. president to go back to Washington. In his reply, he was said, to have written God willing and the creek don't rise, he uh, asserted they was referring to the Creek Indian tribe and not a body of water. But, well, Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. And it makes historical sense. It yeah, does. It yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. And puts a whole new meaning to it that, you know. So Interesting. Said, we went on a little boat yeah. ride for, you know, had lunch. Right, right. Yeah, when the dinner, yeah, lunch cruises kind and of thing. I always, yeah. I always hope when I learn something that I remember it. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say it again when, it's, when something right. comes up, you know. So... But that is that is uh, that is a, a cool little uh, twist on something that I'm, oh yeah that we yeah what that we've used I mean I've I mean I've heard that for years I mean that yeah. that phrase yeah. and that and I've used it you know yeah but I had oh had never known the where the origination from it yeah of course so. if, if the actual creek rises that's going to be a problem too. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're <laughs> right, exactly. If you if you are if your plan is to follow the river on foot from point A to point B, and the creek rises, you're not going to be able to follow that river because that creek's going to be keep you away from it. And you know, when I was younger, I used to fly a lot more than I do now, and I used to fly right. out of Jacksonville quite a okay. lot. Okay. And I used to look down at the at the rivers and mm -hmm. it could, oh yeah, it could be yeah, any airport, right? Right. And I always so one day I'd like to take a boat ride on that thing and right and, and see so where I, it, yeah I, I did yeah. a little little tiny it's, it right. takes, takes a long time to go three hours. I mean, I mean, it takes a long time to go three hours. Yeah. Three hours doesn't cover a whole lot of oh because ground, like you say right. it's you know the slow moving river even though the boat is powered yeah, it is meant yeah. to be a a gentle cruise to yeah. where you can see not something where it's flying by <laughs> yeah. this isn't NASCAR on the St John's yeah it's, <laughs> anyway it's just it's, something yeah. cool it's yeah cool. that is that is interesting and and fun. So. All right, phone lines are open. If you would like to call in, we love hearing from you uh, when you participate in this show. This is such a visual show. That's why Caroline created a Facebook page. Right. It's called In the Garden. In the Garden. And yep. you just have to be a member, and that's pretty easy. You pretty just, easy to do. Just, just ask. say, hey, can I can I be part of this? And yeah, say, so come on board. And she'll hit well, that button. Well, and welcome aboard. Yep. Just have to watch your P's and Q's. That's it. That's it. Just, you know, we, we try your to keep, pints it, keep and it. Pints and quarts. and or or pots and containers. Oh, that's P's and C's. Pints and <laughs> pots and containers. Um, you know, just something to share some information with other gardeners and listeners to the show and and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, even if you've got a question for, for somebody who's, you know, up north, I mean, we'll do what we can to find out the answer. You, I mean, we, we, uh, you know, gardening practices don't really change from one location to another. Not, not severely, you know, not drastically. Are you a grandma? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my grandson turned 11 yesterday. 11? 11. Yeah. No way. Yeah, All right. Well, you yeah. can't fool him with this no. one. No. But I have something to fool the kids with. Okay. You ready? Okay. Go outside with the little kids and say, we're going to plant an acorn, right? Ah. Then you dig a little hole, put the acorn in and say, all right, I'll see you tomorrow when you have to school, whatever. See you, right. see you this afternoon. Right. And then have Bob Wines come and bring in one of those big shade trees. Ah, uh, yeah. And then plant. 
<laughs> plant a big tree on top. Oh, you know what else is kind of fun is is you know going to plant a, you know the sunflowers. It's not not necessarily tricking them, <laughs> but get your flower pots. Maybe your like your broken ones or things like that. Something small. Um, with the bottom out of it and, yeah. and plant and tuck them down in the ground just a little bit. We'll let the pot stick up, you know, nicely and put like sunflower, put oh. like a sunflower in oh. it. So especially like the giant, the mammoth giant. So it looks that like it's growing out of a little tall. pot. Yeah. They, they get to be 12 feet tall, but here it is in the little, <laughs> in the little pot on the ground. And, and the stem has plenty of room in there. Yeah. For those. But it'll also keep everybody away from them with your with their weed whackers too. So how long does it take a bicycle to be in, in, enveloped by a tree? I've seen pictures, like photographs of a bicycle where like it's in, leaned up against a tree and, and it's embedded and it's, in it's, it. Yeah, yeah. It, that's generations, I'm sure. Wow. Yeah, but that's yeah one of those things that that tree is actually healing over, or another tree is actually grown up beside it. Um, and I just saw a weird thing on Facebook of a a rat. Um, and I think it was in India. It was in India. I know. I'll, I know. I won't find it again because it was. It was kind of neat. Um, oh, wrong page. Um, but that this rat had a tree, a sapling, growing out of it. What? Yeah, it was kind of creepy, and I felt sorry for the rat. What it had kind of thing. Gr you're it was growing out, like almost like from between its shoulder what? blades. Wow! And yeah, that's it's too far down. That was yeah, because things update so quick. Uh, but you might be able to to do a YouTube search on it because it was a video, and this poor thing they they uh, hypothesized that that it had a wound yeah. on its back yeah. and a seed had gotten in That's there and trapped because you figure rats eat seeds and, and plant material and things like that. So, you know, it's easy to have, have a small cut or right, something right, on its right. back or where to bend an attack by another animal, uh, brushing up underneath, uh, you know, bushes and things like that. And a, a small seed getting in there and where it was at, he would have never been able to dislodge it. I don't think. And the thing grew. Wow. And it's actually, I mean, it, the, the poor rat couldn't walk, but they said it did not have brain damage. Um, but it, it looked like it was having spinal issues that it, I could, bet. That yeah. it couldn't stand up. I got a tree growing out of my back. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's just one of those, one of those strange I'm looking for it on here. Yeah. See if you can. I don't know if I can get rat to with it. tree. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's a. Uh, uh, How come we're so like afraid or disgusted by rats? They look cute. Look at these I, I have well, I have a, I have a pet one. I'm you do. I'm down to one because because poor um, uh, Murdoch Murdoch passed, so I'm down to Harry, and Harry's antisocial. So, is, is it sad, like when a rat dies? It, it is. I mean, because Murdoch was the cool one. It's not like he a was dog, the, though, He right? was the social one. No, because they don't live as long. Um, but they're they're still just kind of they're fun, you know, fun pets. They're actually very smart creatures. Um, I, to me, they're a lot more fun than than what would eat them. You know, meaning the snakes. <laughs> yeah. And that's how usually well, the ones come into the houses that my daughter uh, has, you know, a, adopted a, a feeder. You know, rat because he was cute. Here it is. Farmer discovers rat with plant growing out of its back. Yeah, that's the one. Is that it? That's probably it. Is that a new story? Uh, I don't think it was a new story. It was just on. Uh, no, I mean new. Oh, it's new. It, it, it was current on my. I mean, I just saw it this morning. I, I actually I, I watched it while I was here. <laughs> oh, really? The, yeah, out in the out in the lobby. There. Is this the video you saw right here? Is that the uh, same video? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. And and, and that's a too. pretty big seedling growing out of that. That's it's very large. I mean, the rat I believe is probably I don't know nine inches maybe long. If so, that. do they cut it off of it? I, I don't know. They just I mean they just showed you the video again after the end of it. But it's like the farmer was going to take it home and and remove it. But I'm not sure how he was going to remove it without killing the poor creature. I mean, wow, he looks he crazy. looks very distressed. Yeah. So if you, if you have, yeah, he looks it, like yeah, he's he looks about very, ready to uh, just, give it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It looks like that. That has been very painful. I you wonder how it, how it managed. And I mean, Aww, that, yeah. look at the poor guy. Oh yeah. my gosh. I feel sorry for him. Yep. I mean, I could see doing surgery and removing, but that's just me. Yeah. I could see it too. <laughs> yeah. That's just me. I mean, I wonder so how much, a, I wonder how bad the roots are. The roots must be all yeah, throughout just, his I'm body. Not, I'm just wondering how, you know, what kind of, 
or if it's mostly just under the skin. Oh my gosh! Don't you feel so sad I for do, him? Yeah, because you see, it's trying to trying to move. Robert, right. look That's at this rat with a with a plant oh, grown out of his back. Oh, poor, poor little guy. guy. Poor little guy. But hopefully, it all works out for him. He <sighs> gets to live the rest of his little rat life, and you know. Yeah. That's you know that's that's one of those. He's one got of those a story to tell. Things. Yeah, he's got a story. He's got a story to tell the grandchildren. Actually, that's a female. Uh, How do you know that? Because you can tell males and females. Oh, apart. did he die? No, I no, think that's she? just the. Yeah, I think that's just the. The end of that one part of the. Oh, video, that's just maybe. the still picture. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I, thought, <laughs> I think so because I thought I watched the whole thing. Yeah, because then, then there was another video that popped up in the corner oh. that said, you know, they they were talking at the same time on it, and then said, you know, here, watch the video again, and yeah, you know, but it's like, no, no, I had seen enough. I watched it once. No, rats yeah. eat plants, right? Uh, seeds, fruit. So he's got to get know, a friend. Come over and eat it, this thing it, off of me. It's, well, no, they don't eat plants necessarily like that. Oh, they don't. Yeah, they no. eat seeds, though. Yeah, they eat seeds and fruit and berries. Did you ever hear this, this commercial bugs. that says a, a handful or two or three uh-huh. of nuts a day uh-huh. will increase your, I mean, so many healthy things can oh, come from yeah, that. Oh, uh, yeah, almonds is one. Yeah, you can't well, overdo it. And, and Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's a healthy fat. It's um, it's supposed to differ, depending on which nut is which, you know, which. So having a, having a, uh, a serving of nuts a day, which I, I think is only like an, uh, like an ounce, like a handful. A little handful, yeah. Yeah, and it's like that's not enough. I mean, <laughs> not quite enough for me. But of of preferably raw nuts. Um, I'm not sure how roasted fares with some of those. But like walnuts, they say, you know, look at the shape of the walnut. Yeah, you know, when you take it out, walnut looks like a brain. It's good for your brain and I, brain cakes and stuff like that. And We've I think that. almonds. I think that's it's why I almonds, eat more bananas, um, by the way. Uh, almonds are uh, uh, supposed to be good for depression, right? Uh, or you know, against depression. Kidney or beans depression. are good for your yeah. kidneys. That's not a nut. That's a bean. Uh, still good for them. Kid- kidney beans are good for digestion because they're high fiber, <laughs> and so are all your nuts. Are are f- good fiber, good uh, a good fat source as well as a good protein. So nuts are good for you. Hmm. And it was so funny where I know it has absolutely nothing to do with gardening, but it's one of those funny things that, you know, everybody starts doing something, whether or not it's, you know, using Epsom salts on everything in the garden or neem oils, the the go-to to kill all the insects or whatever. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches must be going around. I don't know if it's the whole back to school thing, but had a couple different people that were <laughs> really? talking about, you know, bringing peanut butter and jelly to work. And I'm going, you know what? I need a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So that's what I'm taking to work for lunch today. <laughs> oh, it sounds so, good, actually. It's like, yeah, it's well, like, it's, yeah. it's contagious. Now it, I want it is. one. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's one of those things. You go, you know what? I have not eaten a peanut butter jelly sandwich in I don't know how long. You know, I've had toast with peanut butter. So, what's your toast fa- so let's go. Let's just explore let's go, this a little go, bit. The whole thing. What it's kind of peanut butter do you use? Creamy Jif. Creamy Jeff. Creamy what Jeff kind of jelly do you use? Um, I'm going with raspberry because that's what I've got. Do you go for the jam, the jelly, or the preserves? Preserves. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, What's preserve. yours, raspberry? I've got raspberry. Now, what yeah. kind of bread? White bread. It's got to be, on. It's well, Publix white T- bread. Toasted? Is it toasted? No, no not for a sandwich. No, not no, toasted. For breakfast, yes. <laughs> and, uh, so and then you make one of each and you eat them separate. Is that still a sandwich? So la- last question. Do you put butter on it with the peanut butter and jelly? No, my no. mom used to do that. No, it's just like, kind of gross. <laughs> it was supposed to help it not stick to the roof of your mouth. Oh, wait, that's there is the one more question. For. Do you cut it? Diagonal. Diagonally. There you go. <laughs> it's be it's fancier for some it's, reason. It's, it's easier to eat it because you eat it by the corner. <laughs> no, it's not easier. Yes, it is. Come you on. eat the two corners and you got the middle. Because yeah, so, I keep the crust so on the So if bread, dad yeah. cut it the wrong way. Then and you just made him cut it the other to, way, make squares out of it. You go to school and go, oh, man, my dad cut this. It's yeah. so hard to eat it and this it's way. It's tough. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> you ready oh, for a the, phone call? Let's please and get, get some sanity back here. <laughs> Good morning. You're on the air with Carolyn. Hi, this is Hugh again, real quick. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, I, I went outside and I noticed some of the cocoons were on the evergreens. Yeah. Uh, there's no way I'm going to get to all of them because I got a lot of lot of evergreen and I can't walk in there because I'm going to step and break the branches. Sure, sure. Uh, now, I, I can't spring them now because of the fact that the, the, the cocoon itself protects the worm. Right, right. So, when the worm when the worm comes out, 
do I watch for that and then spray, or 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 does the moth do the damage when it turns into a moth? Um, the moth is not doing the damage. The moth would be what you would be spraying for to kill the adult, because that's that's the adult form. So you might want to keep an eye out for that. But I'm not real sure. I didn't really get an answer on how long they stay in the form of that cocoon, because it said something about um, being a spring. Uh, yeah. You know, plant, I mean, uh, pest, but I may have to find out a little more. And like I said, I'll, I'll put on fa on the Facebook page. I know you're not on there um, to, you know, any controls I can find. But my thought would be to, uh, one, remove as many of the bagworms as you can, and then yeah. to watch for the moths to emerge and come out. But I'm not sure how long they take to, you know, to get, you know, to hatch out. Or when, you know, yeah, when you'll be looking for them. Once the worm is out, uh, that's what's going to do the damage, right? Before it turns into a moth? No, the, it'll, it's going to come out of there as a moth. It's going to come out oh. of that bag as a moth. Because it's already, oh. it's in there as a as a worm. I don't know if you want if you wanted to come back by. I, I pulled one apart here. It's here at the studio. Instead of throwing it away, if you come back through, you could you could take a look and see it. He's still alive, actually. Yeah. yeah well, now the, the moth is going to fly away, right? Or is he going to be damaged? He's going to. He's going. He's the moth itself isn't going to hurt the bush. It's just it's going to breed and lay eggs, and oh. that's and the eggs are going to hatch, become the larvae. The larvae is going to feed and begin to create these this bag around itself while it feeds, uh, and and begin to you know, and that's where your damage starts to come out at. Would you recommend any spraying at any particular time? Um, I'm thinking when you see the, let's see, in the moth, uh, in the moth, in the fall, the insects use their silk uh, and pieces of the tree to create camouflage cocoon looking bag, which they fill up with. Okay, wait a minute. They fill that up with, listen to this, up to 10, uh, up to 1,000 eggs. The eggs hatch uh -huh. in late spring to early summer, uh, super tiny black wow. larvae. Uh, so I should have read the whole thing. So there's a thousand eggs in that there's thing? There's a thousand, there can be a thousand eggs. The caterpillars use their silk thread to create a parachute to travel nearby trees. So, yeah, when you're going to be watching, pests hang out in their bags until late summer or early fall. When the adult ma uh, males emerge to mate about the size of a quarter, male bagworms are ashy black moths with transparent wings. So I would be watching. I would begin to be watching. We're here already, and I hate to say, the end of August. It's almost, it's almost yeah, fall. It's sep know. almost September that I would be watching and then spraying. Uh, I'm probably like a liquid seven would even knock out the moth because usually the moth isn't going to be hard to kill it's what's hard to kill is what's inside the cocoon well i think what i'll do is i'll, I'll leave a couple of them i'll visually on on the brick wall so i can watch them and, and see when they get the worm stage and then at that point i'll know to go ahead with my with what i want to do you know right if yeah if you see that if you see that broken open or a hole in it or something like that because you might miss it when it comes out uh and then go through and and spray and you may need to spray the undersides of those and take a look around to the shrubbery that are nearby also yeah, you because know, okay. they will they will get on other they will get on other plants as well. Is this kind of a common problem down here? Because I've never heard or seen of it before. They're they're native to North America. They're mainly in the eastern United States, dispersed all along the East Coast and much and much into the South in the Southeast. So no, oh, okay. it's not not uncommon. It's actually you know native to this area. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm hoping I'll have luck with the little guys. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm in my yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Do you need to keep an eye out on it. Okay, thanks again very much. Bye. All right, you're welcome. Bye bye now. Phone lines are open if you want to call. We got about oh my five minutes. Wow, we're almost done. Yeah, almost done. And and I guess here at the the end, we've got a couple of Bob Wines gift certificates. Uh, yeah. Bob Wines Community Gardens and Nursery. And here as we are coming into fall, there's going to be some great plants that you can put in uh, for some fall color for winter color. Um, I know they've been having tree sale and all of that. That you can go to their website or their Facebook page and be able to see all the different kinds of things. I know yeah, here in the yeah. winter time, you know, if you're looking for specific camellia or you've seen a camellia and you want to know go to bob wines they are like 
the experts on camellias. I mean, that's hence the name, Bob Wine's Camellia Garden right, right. and Nursery. <laughs> uh, I believe that's you know he started it out as you know. Uh, you know, the gardens as well as then began to propagate and breeding also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's got one, I think, named after him. I think he, uh, it could be that there's one, one yeah, yeah, that there's one bred with that, that they managed to get the name patent, patent that name or trademark that name out of it. But just remember if you've got one that is a named variety, most named varieties are either patented or something, unless that patent has run out, uh, you're not allowed to propagate those for profit. I don't think you're supposed for profit. To, I don't think you're supposed to propagate it for your own personal oh, use really? either. But I mean that because that's just like anything else that's patented. You're not allowed to make your own, or you're not supposed to. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, you don't usually get caught if you're just making it for your just own use. Just planting a tree. But if you're, yeah, 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 if you're doing it, if you take a cutting and you put it, just because you want to try to do it and make another one in your yard, I don't think anybody's going to ever find out. But if you try to start selling them at the local flea market, yeah, you might you're going to get caught eventually. Uh, so uh, let's see. You have an eleven-year-old grandchild. Is he in school? Oh yeah. Here? I mean, yeah. here in our community. No, he's no, he's uh, no. My daughter and he are down uh, in Orange County, and he oh, started. County, yeah, okay. he started sixth grade the other week before while well, he was still ten. Uh, turned eleven there. He's doing the international. They have a middle school baccalaureate international baccalaureate program, uh -huh, uh -huh. and so he's gone into that, which is cool. Wow. Smart kid. Are, are you? Um, is, is your family into gardening? Are you like the only one? Um, pretty much me. I mean, like my sister-in-law, but she's up in Jersey. My brother likes to garden. You know, yeah. But, you know, it's to grow the grow the groceries for the Do table. they call you for advice? Nah. No? Nah. nah. See, I mean, occasionally, okay. but not. Yeah. No, I mean, it's again, it's one of those things. You're up in Jersey. I'm here in Florida. Um, timing and things like that. For me to tell you when to plant broccoli up there, I'm not real sure. I'd have to look it up because here I haven't even started my plants. I'll be planting them, you know, soon, but not for another couple of months. And God, they wouldn't be planting that, you know, in November because they're thinking about snow. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be planting that in early spring, you know, where they can plant all that stuff all almost at the same time. Or that goes in first where in, you know, they might be putting that in the ground you know, April, um, then not getting their tomatoes until May, uh, April would be our, you might get one more planting of cabbage in at that time, uh, or broccoli kind of thing, but we're putting, you know, um, tomatoes in the ground in March. So they're, they're not even thinking about tomato. I mean, they might be thinking about them, but they're not going to put them in the ground probably until about the first of May. You know, I wanted to ask you, but then we have like a minute left. So, okay. so I'll just ask you maybe one day in the future show, you can talk yeah. about this. How does the hydroponic thing work and why would somebody choose to do that over simply planting something in soil? Oh, okay. That's, Maybe yeah, that's, there's a, it sounds there's like a show. long topic. It sounds but like no, I mean, but hi, yeah, hydroponics versus aquaponics, which are oh, two well, separate the things. Yeah, they're two separate. Hydroponics is growing without soil with just liquids. Aquaponics is using fish as well. Using fish. Using fish. Oh, my gosh. Can you make so a mental note to yeah, expand to, on this? Yeah, in the yeah I sure will. Uh, so you have to work today? I do. I got to go home and make my peanut butter and jelly sandwich so I can take it to <laughs> On white bread cut On diagonally. On white bread cut diagonal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Larry. All right, we'll be time. right back. Matt Gibbs is up next. Uh, Auto Repair with Personal Care is the name of his show. We got car. If you have car questions, Matt will be here to answer them. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Lillian Wu. Sources tell Fox News that Molly Tibbetts, the University of Iowa student missing for about a month, is dead. We still do not know how or when she died. The 20-year-old college student went missing on July 18th after going for a run near Brooklyn, Iowa. Fox's Steve Ducey will be hearing more from officials at 5 p.m. Eastern. A court appearance today for the dad in a Colorado triple murder, Christopher Watts, the father of two young girls 
girls found submerged in oil tanks admits he killed his pregnant wife, but says she's the one who killed the kids. The father of the wife, Shannon Watts, thanking police Monday. We're working so hard to find my daughter, granddaughters, and Nico. The suspect claims he killed his wife after seeing her kill the kids. Fox News, we report, you decide. When it comes to maintaining our vehicles, we all know to change the oil. But did you know cleaning the fuel system is just as important? Even high-quality fuel can leave behind carbon deposits, robbing your engine of power and fuel economy. Gum Out has a solution. Regain Complete Fuel System Cleaner. Regain contains polyetheramine, a nitrogen-based detergent that safely removes